Darn it. Hold on a sec. I gotta, gotta assume the position here. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I have another. Bye. You know we're almost to the same amount of episodes of that Get My Goat as we are to the regular show? Yeah, but it's just there's so much more work that goes into a Dune Steve episode. Yeah, it also counts yeah. in the uh, Dupo Remo episodes and the 13 Days of Halloween episodes. It counts those? Yeah, those are on the same feed, so... Oh, well, then we have easily more, because we did 28 episodes in a row for, for the February uh-huh. last year. And there's a couple of extra things, those... Uh, like the ones that we just did, panel? yeah, the new Media Expo panels are two two more episodes, and I'm sure there's got to be two or three others. Well, we may well be good. even, or even have surpassed. It's something that I was telling Abby the other day is for that gets my goat. I could do that show by myself. I could edit it. I could even upload it by myself. It wouldn't be as good as the ones you upload, but I have capability of doing that. For a Dune Steve episode, you need somebody to do art. You need female voices. You need you know somebody to have written the story and all that stuff. I mean, it's just it's a group effort, a much bigger effort right. than just you and me sitting down and us talking. And then, if if I were really ambitious, you and I could sit down on a Monday, and by Tuesday night, it could be up. Which is why we are canceling the regular podcast and focusing completely on that gets my goat from here on out, folks. <laughs> That. We could record on a Monday, and on Tuesday we'd have Solomon Grundy. Uh, if if Man of Steel doesn't suck, and it doesn't do to Superman as I have attested that it's trying to do, who would you cast as Solomon Grundy in a future sequel? John Goodman. Uh, the correct answer was John Good. Oh. All right. Never mind. Superman I think- never made any money. Saving the world from Solomon Grundy. Solomon Grundy say he did. Solomon Grundy say Superman is sellout. <laughs> we were we were looking on YouTube. We found this thing. Solomon Grundy wants pants too. Yes. <laughs> I showed that to the kids, and yeah, then now they're going around saying, that, "Hey, you remember that Solomon Grundy want pants too?" <laughs> I see because I'm I don't follow the Super Friends. I just uh, want pants. That doesn't amuse me as much as it, it does pants. other people that either they got the actual voice talent they or they didn't. got sound alikes. Not even that do- close to the sound alikes, tell you the truth. Oh, really? I mean, they tried with some of them, but Solomon Grundy was only so so. Oh, okay. I, 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 Solomon Grundy sound kind of like this. Oh, I loved that. Yes. <laughs> For some reason, the character of Solomon Grundy really fascinates me. And, and since we, derailed the show and we're not talking about what i wanted to talk about he is we'll move into it he's a character that was created at the end of the well i guess it would have been at the beginning of the silver age this the the golden age of comics is when comics first started Mm -hmm. where you had stuff right before world war ii basically and it went up through the 50s and then comic books basically died in the mid 50s because of the anti-comic book hysteria that swept the nation oh Um, baby fish mouth is sweeping the nation indeed it is And then afterward, there was a comic book renaissance because so many of the titles that had been selling so well in the 50s were killed and they had to find something to sell. And so it became pretty much, as we know comic books now, all superheroes because that was one of the few things that the comic book code allowed were these superhero stories. And and Grundy- Couldn't have the bloodthirsty vampire tales? You couldn't even use the word vampire in a comic book. That was part of the comic code. The word vampire was so offensive- it was just banned. It's so weird. And it wasn't Could until it spelled it with a y, the end though. of the, the 60s, the beginning of the, the 70s, that that was lifted. And you could say Dracula King of the V-words or whatever. Whoa, um, the V-words? What kind of a comic book was this? But uh, Solomon Grundy was this <laughs> character who I think he was created to fight like Dr. Fate or something like that. And he's essentially like a, a ghoul kind of thing. He was like some kind of, sort of scumbag mobster type guy in new orleans who was murdered and dumped into a swamp or something like that and through via black magic or via whatever he was reanimated uh, and but he's he's not brought back to life he's a he is a corpse uh-huh. and that's one of those characters that because of his nature 
they've killed him many, many times. You can kill this guy because they'll just find a way to bring him back instead of, you know, oh, he survived or whatever. And in fact, some people have written that there's more than one Solomon Grundy, that it's like a curse, that it's a mantle that's taken on when, you know, like a bad person dies, that they will become a Solomon Grundy and all that. Although I don't like that. I like that it is one being that keeps getting resurrected. But when I first saw Solomon Grundy, I thought that it was that it was just the Hulk. Somebody had not colored the hair of the Hulk or something like that, because that's what he looks like. Uh-huh. He's in like shredded clothes and he's really big and muscular and almost ape-like in the way that many people draw the Hulk. And he has white hair. Uh, he has white hair and white skin. But I, for some reason, when you showed me this clip years ago of the challenge of the Super Friends, I think Luthor says something like, you know, there is no one source of evil in the universe. And Solomon Grundy says, Solomon Grundy say there is. I laughed and laughed. And I was like, oh, rewind it. My gosh, that's the (laughs) coolest thing I've ever heard. I don't know what it was. It's either the voice or the accent it's or the, the fact voice. that he refers to himself in this third and person. Yeah, every time he says Solomon Grundy, and he he also says Solomon Grundy say whatever it is he's going to say. But yeah, I think in honor of that, I'm going to speak like Solomon Grundy for the rest of the episode. So whenever I speak, I'm going to say, Big Ankelovich say. <laughs> Big Ankelovich say we should move on to a real topic of show. Well, before we do, uh, you mentioned the Dupo Remo and you mentioned the, the 13 nights of Halloween. I've been thinking it would be fun to do that again, to do like a marathon of shows. And one thing that I thought that would be really fun would be to talk about music. This is, I, we're not actually going to do an episode about this, but let's say that you and I each bring a list of our top five songs, a breakup songs or whatever, and then we each just share my number one breakup song or whatever. And, and down, do it. doobie, do down, down. Big Anklevich say, you remember that scene from yeah. Better Off Dead where every single song on the radio is another breakup song? He switches it and then finally rips his radio out and throws it on the ground. Big yes. Anklevich say that funny scene. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. A, do you think that we ought to do another marathon? And two, what do you think of the idea of Talking about music, at least for some of them. Big Anklevich say, talking about music is fun. Big Anklevich like music. Big Anklevich say, doing another marathon is okay, too. I'm, I'm down with that. Well, I, I know people liked the last one. And I think I explained after we did it that that one was way more work than the whole month of February, which we did last <laughs> year. And so I'd probably be inclined to do super short episodes like we did in February uh-huh. or a, a short span of time, you know, like 10 days in a row or seven days in a row or whatever, but they could be the longer episodes. But I don't know. I mean, somebody was just like, who was it? Somebody was like, I will pay you guys to do that again. <laughs> that was really, really cool. Uh, who was the guy? They had had the super storm in New York. and I think his name was Tom. And the Tom from New York, did we talk about it on the show or did I just blog about it? Uh, you went and talked to uh, fake Sean Connery and did that special message just for Tom, if you recall. Okay, I do remember that. We put it on to, that's, a, that's another one of those episodes on the, the, uh, the, that gets my goat feed, that makes the feed as large as or larger than our original feed. And then now we're on Stitcher as well. Yes, yes, and, that and is true. What is, Stitcher. is Stitcher just a competitor to iTunes, or what? What is Stitcher? Stitcher is uh, it's it's. I think it's an Android app. Maybe it's a iTunes or a. Oh, it's a, a podcatcher. But I think it's a little more than a podcast. It's 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 like a way to get radio and stuff like that on your phone or your tablet. I think is the deal with. I'm really not. Especially particularly familiar with Stitcher, but I do know that there were people that were listening to our show on Stitcher and then Stitcher had some kind of a policy change where you had to do several things to be on Stitcher. And I said, oh, F you, Stitcher. I'm not doing it. So they removed us. And they removed us. And then later, Cliff Ravenscraft said, you must be on Stitcher because you're missing all these people that listen to stuff that way if you're not. So So I bit the bullet and I agreed to their terms and demands and what were the demands and how long were we not available on stitcher i think it was a year or so that we were not available 
and uh, their demands were they wanted a million dollars and a helicopter that would take them to the airport and then, then a plane that f- with fuel so they could get to South America. A non-extradition treaty country. Right. So that that was the demands. <laughs> no, I, I, one of the demands, I believe, was that we mentioned that we're on Stitcher on the podcast. So there we go. We just met a demand. And wow. you did it without even uh, knowing that that was a demand. Okay. So when when we mention it on the actual Doonstief show, you'll know that that is under duress. <laughs> That's right. It's because they've got all those people uh, tied up at the bank. And, that, and so... <laughs> okay. Well, so uh, hopefully... We gain new listenership because of that? Or? Yeah, and at the very least, hopefully we get the people that used to listen to us on Stitcher back. I don't know, you know, if those people periodically search for Dune Steef on there or what happens, how that works out. But Gosh, I wish that were the case. Do you really think that there are people that search for Dune Steef? Well, I would think somebody maybe who used to listen to Dune Steef and they're thinking, oh, yeah, I forgot about those guys. I should check and see. I did announce it on Facebook, so... Well, good. And, and Twitter. So uh, hopefully that reaches some of those people that used to listen to us on Stitcher and no longer does. We should hire somebody, and by hire I mean not pay them, to be our like chief of public relations, you know, like the, the Dune Steve chief of public relations. And basically all they would get is love and like a mention an episode but here, their man. job is to uh you know do that kind of stuff and uh send a promo out to other podcasts and and we would uh, have to make a promo if they wanted to send Okay, it out, well they so. would have to do that as well. I mean You just, know our last promo is so old that 080T was still beeping. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> um, I if I could, if I wanted to I could sit down and make up a funny-ish promo, a modern promo, but I I don't want to i don't i don't care and see that's why we need somebody i think i care a little bit less than you do but it's not like you're just anxious to oh my gosh we got to get our work out that we got to let people know that we got us to, to grow our business and all that you know we talked about it in the new media expo episodes of you know there are people out there that they just can't wait to make money from something to to make their voices heard to the the podcasting pie is so small, but there's like, you know, my piece has to be bigger Mm -hmm. and uh, I don't care about any of that stuff. I you know, we've talked about it a million times. If the podcast were actually making us money so that it's just like, this is a job, we would have so many more episodes. And and also we would feel, I don't want to use the O word, but I will. We'd feel obligated to get together and put it together. and, And the V word in the same show. Yes. And, and that would it would take away a little bit of the pleasure of and the doing P-word. it. Word. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Although now I'm going to want to talk about erotica. Like that, that that can be the, the you actual Madonna sub- song. Or, or I thought we weren't going to go into the music episodes until the special marathon. All right. Well, we, we'll each do our top three Madonna songs in an, in an episode when we do that. But, but, but I was saying, if we if this were a job. If we made the kind of money that, I mean, I I don't know. People who talk about how much money they make doing something like this are not the kind of people that we would want to be friends with. (laughs) They are, I don't want to say sellouts. What's a more offensive word than sellout? Motherfucker? Yeah, less less (laughs) offensive than that. Somewhere in the middle between mofo and sellout. C word? no, no, you again. <laughs> oh, there are people oh, that are way. there. There Sorry. are crass, commercialistic people, uh-huh. and we're not that. But you know, so there are people out there that make money doing this sort of thing, or that make money from their writing, or make money from their podcasting. And uh, if we were doing that, like they were, and, and bringing in, I don't know, whatever the minimum is <laughs> for you to say that's a job, that's a part time job. We're doing that definitely we have to get together every week the point i was trying to make is if it becomes a job it starts to be less fun but that is offset by a paycheck you know what i mean like recently you were complaining about well what you always complain about she's sleeping in the other room she corralled you into doing all this work video editing (laughs) for some friends of hers you know she just volunteered you to do this and then she walked away and got to live her life but you had to spend five, six, seven hours on your day off doing this. 
and we talked about it. It's like, you know, that's what you went to school for and all this stuff. If you were being paid, it would be very, very different. It's like, yeah, well, seven hours at 325 an hour. You know, I made, I did all right today. But because it's free, plus it's eating into your free time. And that's something that you and I have always had with this show is you have less free time than I do. And any time we're doing a show that requires you to do anything that's eating into your sleep time and your time with your family, your laid back or do chores or, you know, what all the things that you have to do that's eating into it. And I guess to a lesser extent, it is mine too, but I don't have a huge list of things I have to do like you do that you keep pushing back and back and say, well, okay, one day I'll get to this thing that I, I do have to do. But anyway, the, the, the funny thing about that, and I was going to interrupt you and you just plowed right on over it and like uh, i'm doing right now you're sick right now and and you told me before you know i hope my voice holds up and 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 i meant to tell you oh that's all right i'll just talk the whole time <laughs> yeah, that's an easy way to get around it yeah one thing that's interesting about that and that's one of the reasons why i went to school in film is when i was younger i wanted to figure out a way to have a job where I wasn't like 99% of the people out there, where they go to work, they get up in the morning, and they go, oh, oh, and they get ready, and then they go and they get in their car, and they're like the guy from Office Space, just stuck in the traffic, and not even sure if being stuck, stuck in traffic is worse than getting there, because then you get there, and you know, I didn't want to be one of those people, like... uh Michael Douglas, where he finally goes crazy, down. right, and just goes and gets himself a gun and goes on a rat. I didn't want to be one of those people where they're just like, they don't want to go to work every day. You know, it's just, it's a job. I wanted it to be something different. So that's why I went to school and film in the first place, because I figured I, I looked at the things that I liked to do and I thought, okay, what is possible that I could make into a job? So yeah, I mean, maybe having deadlines would make it less fun but i don't know that it would because you just have to do more of the thing that you love so i think that that would not be such a, a problem really there may be days when it might seem more like a job than other days but for the most part i think you'd just be like oh this is awesome i'm getting paid to do this keep i'm getting paid we're doing this and people are giving us money to do this I'm sure there's a lot of people that work in Hollywood and stuff like that which who think that every day where they're just like, can you believe this? Or, you know, people that play sports for a living where they're just like, dude, I'm playing basketball and I'm getting millions. Can you believe this? I'm just going out and friggin' playing. But people do that for fun every night. When you're at that level where it's so competitive and there's a hundred other black guys, I'm sorry, there's a hundred other athletic guys who want your spot on the team, then any joy you once got from the game has to be offset by that pressure and that, and the, the, the crowd and, and, you know, the people, I, I, maybe not because they, the, even college basketball players, I mean, let's be honest, make a hell of a lot more money <laughs> playing basketball than, you know, just some kid on the street. And plus there's groupies, plus there's, you know, there's, yeah, there's, there's all, all sorts, sorts of benefits. Of benefits. There's, there's endorsement deals and all that stuff. So yeah, that, that sort of stuff is astoundingly. There's fame and glory. And it's, I mean, just imagine the, the quest for winning. I mean, sure there's pressure, but that's what you're there for is because you're a competitive person. That's why you're in that in the first place. You want to be that guy who holds up the big shiny silver trophy at the end of the year. And so sure there's pressure to win, but you want that pressure and you want to be, and I'm sure you go out there and all those people cheer when you put a ball through the hoop or something like that. You know that they're just like, oh, yes, scream some more for me. Oh, it's like, it's like the Green Lantern, you know, he's just like out there and he just takes out the big lantern and like, oh, he's charging it up. You know what I mean? You know, those guys just get that sense of power and that rush and that, you know, the endorphins or the adrenaline or whatever the body chemical may be that makes you able to do more or whatever. I, I believe the Latin term is cootie. Ah, so whatever the cooties are that uh, you get from something like that, you know, these guys, uh, you know, they love it. And for us, I mean, usually just people liking our show, people commenting, people in the forums, you know, we've actually met some face to face and they mentioned, hey, you didn't do the Silver Spoons thing. Thank goodness. 
I forgot that. I, I forgot I'll, it too. Darn it. That's all right. We'll we'll get to it. I was supposed to remind you. But well, that seems to be our our reward. I mean, there are podcast awards. And you had said that this year you're not going to enter us for the parsecs. Is that right? Or is that may, will that maybe change? Oh, it's possible that people can convince me, but okay. I'm I'm not sold on the value of putting my time into it anymore. I hear you. I, but we did win an actual award recently. <laughs> That's right. And we didn't acknowledge it on the show, mostly because I'm incapable of believing that you know anybody actually likes us or appreciates what we've done but do you remember what it was what was the name of the award was it a duty <laughs> it's the duty award yes we want a duty and it's given out by the righteous dude cast correctly yeah right? i believe so and ours was the least talented least <laughs> endowed what was it i think least it was called missed? the least no i think that was what he originally was going to call it was the least missed but then he thought, oh, that might not be taken as a good thing because it's like it's gone and people don't miss it much. <laughs> so I think he changed it to the least skipped show, which meant that when a new episode comes out, nobody ever leaves it for later and listens to another one first. They, they don't skip it. They listen to it right away. That's really cool. I mean, I granted it's probably just him that gave those. They, they didn't vote on it or anything like that. But just to find out that one person <laughs> says you're the least skipped podcast, is it's good. And, you know, I talk down the donations because I want them to keep coming in. But we have had people donate. We have had people help us in many ways. The microphones we're on right now were donated by a listener who is dead. And it's... <laughs> It's been really appreciated and all that stuff. And so you and I enjoy getting together and we enjoy podcasting and all that. But the editing, the, the, the all the afterward stuff is what takes the time and is work. It is work. But it's one of those things where, you know, you work, but while you're working, you're creating something. And so you feel like it's worthwhile work because when you're done, you've done something. You know, it's like somebody who crochets or paints or something where you know it's not a specifically exciting kind of a thing it's a really slow and it's a lot of work and stuff like that but then when you're done you have something you can stand back and look at it and go check that out i made that and we can do the same kind of thing with our show you know it's a lot of work to put it together and there's other things you could be doing at the time but when you're done it's something you can be proud of which is really cool but yeah, you know, going back to what you were saying before. I was going to go back to even before then. What before? I was going to jump in and say something uh, earlier, but you know, he just kept on going. So I just Wait, held what my are you tongue. Going to talk about? Uh, but you were talking about, you know, how we get part of the payment or the applause, oh, okay. I guess, that we get from people. You know, you said people liking our show or commenting on our show, which I think is better than just getting a like. <laughs> unless that's not what you meant by liking unless you meant the actual meaning yeah i didn't like. mean facebook like good I mean, good I meant, thank you be uh, <laughs> because on the main page of facebook it will tell us that there's a new notification on the dune page and i know that it drives you crazy <laughs> that you go oh a new notification and you click on it and it's just that somebody liked a post it considers that a notification like a comment or a <laughs> A response yeah or it's weird because supposedly some people like I, I saw a thing somewhere where they were talking about where you should post a th if you had something that you were going to say what medium should you use to post it should you go to twitter should you go to facebook should you go to reddit should you go to linkedin should you go to i don't know what else pinterest or whatever it is that you have one of the things they're like are you addicted to likes and maybe you should put it on. And I was just like, how can somebody be addicted to likes? It's nothing. Half the time it's just like, yes, I read this. Is basically what that means. But anyways, I don't know. That's it's like, you know, I've got a terrible toothache and my grandma just died. Like. Yeah. It's like, like, what is what? that? And I've seen some people where they're like, oh, I wish there was a some other kind of button that I could. Or, or you could just comment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, how but many it, times have you seen somebody say, I wish there was a love button or i wish there was a dislike button. right like you but you commented that you essentially said it better uh, yeah but what i was going to say now that i, I went back and 
we got onto a different tangent. But I, I, another thing like that is I, I put on Facebook a little gallery, I guess it was, or a photo album, maybe that's what they're called, of people wearing Dune Steve shirts. And that's another one of those things where I made these shirts and I put them out there just because I think it's awesome to see somebody with a Dune Steve shirt or to know that even just to know that someone out there has a Dune Steve shirt that they may wear around sometime. We don't get any money off of these Dune Steve shirts and I did that on purpose. I purposefully made them as cheap as I could possibly make them so that hopefully more people will get one. They won't look at it and go, oh, $20 for a Dune. No, that's more than I want to pay. They can get it for cheaper. And unfortunately, there's always shipping thrown on top of the price. But I do it just for that opportunity. And I, and I made that thing. So if you have a Dune Steve shirt, take a picture of yourself with it and send it to us. And I will put it on that album. Oh, that's a great idea. That's what I, I, I just love just to see people standing there wearing a Dune's t-shirt or what, in whatever way. And there's several to choose from. I've made a bunch of them. You don't have to just pick one style. At the New Media Expo, Renee was wearing a Dune's t-shirt that's right. one of the days. And it's just like, holy cow, somebody wearing a shirt and she's a woman. <laughs> Where have you been? You know, all that kind of thing. Unfortunately. Married. Yeah, you're out of luck. Well, I mean, she, she's also a sighted person oh, so you know yeah that would... does cause problems for you too but it was just really <laughs> cool that somebody would do that i don't know it's... what i wanted to do i wish uh I, I we should have sent an email to everybody ahead of time just made sure everybody who had a shirt brought it so we could get a big group photo if we could get like five people in one picture wearing a dunes t-shirt that would be so awesome. <laughs> See, I'm 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 not able to do that. I wouldn't be able to ask people to bring a Dune Steve shirt. I, I, I'm and I I probably should seek therapy about it because my <laughs> self image is so ridiculously broken, and I don't know if it's because my dad loved my brother more or what the deal is. There's got to be some psychological explanation for this but it's just like yeah well I, if you've got a dune steve t-shirt keep it to yourself you know <laughs> i would hate for you to get beat up in the playground uh, <laughs> i even made a couple of new designs fairly recently there was one i still haven't finished yet i was going to do another uh, your mountain is waiting design well you see people could run in that or people could use that as a self-inspiration kind of thing is that a word self-inspiration self-motivation just, there you go okay i was gonna say inspirational just by itself I and mean, uh, self you how long ago was it that you did the your mountain is waiting episode i think it was some it was time of uh burning man which i believe is somewhere in midsummer oh it was that long yeah ago? it's been like six months oh because we've sort of stopped doing it but this week you mentioned that you had listened to it again. And, oh, my gosh, it got you so excited that you, well, you didn't I write. I wet myself, though. You, and did. you didn't work on the show, but you you said that, oh, you all you considered it. And I thought, I wow, that's, that's awesome, man. Yeah, it, came, it got me to the point where I actually thought about the show in a positive light for at least 20 minutes before it wore off. See, nowadays, that's really a milestone. <laughs> I actually thought of it in a positive light for longer then the story itself lasts. Oh, so that's okay. something. You got this computer is is in my reckoning uh, would have been early two thousand seven was it or, or late two thousand six? Which uh, let's say two thousand six. I think it was late two thousand six. Explain very 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 briefly why you got this computer. <laughs> well, the idea for it was I was going to drum up a business being a a wedding video maker. I think that was actually going to be a second job because what we did was my wife quit her job at Target that she was working at at the time and she went for a few months with no job while I did absolutely nothing in the uh, area of... Besides your full-time job. Right. I mean, yeah, I did my full-time job, but this whole getting... Oh, wedding videos. Wedding videos together. I never did anything and made any progress towards anything, but we did waste a whole lot of money on a very expensive computer and a very expensive editing system then she got a new job somewhere else a few months later because we were failing so miserably to make ends meet but if you had done the wedding video thing which apparently is really lucrative i mean i i could do a whole episode complaining about this whole wedding thing and the ring and the dress that you're only going to wear once and not even for a full day and all that 
but it, it, it would probably come off as sexist because I don't understand it. It's such a giant money black hole <laughs> that I it just it's horrifying when I hear about it. I mean, when people talk about the, the national debt and tr- what a trillion dollars is, that's how I feel when I find out how much somebody spent on a wedding. It's kind of and, a personal family version of a national debt when it comes down to it. <laughs> And it, and it achieves the exact same right. objective because the, at this point, it's all interest. The national debt is just paying off billions of dollars in interest and in, you're never going to catch up. <laughs> well, I guess a, that's a, kind of like marriage. No. Yeah, oh. Turning into the Dave Ramsey podcast here now. <laughs> but what I was going to say is, I mean, all Rish's skeletons in his closet aside, people – because it's the special day and because, you know, it's, it's, it, it's the, what is it that they always say of a, a it's something of a girl's life or of a woman's life is it's the best day of her life. It's the something, the pinnacle of, of life and all that stuff. You know, they always want to capture that memory and they want it recorded. And what they'll do is they'll pay somebody an unbelievable amount of money to just camcord. And I know that that's an eighties term, but videotape. <laughs> And I that's know that an that's 80s an 80s term. term. Betamax, what goes on, and then just, you know, put it out. You could say with a boys to men song underneath something, it. which is an even more archaic term. They uh, kinetoscope <laughs> what's going on at the event, and then they just lay it down, poorly edited or unedited, and sometimes put a pop song under it, or more likely a country song. <laughs> and that's the document that you have to remember this. Forever kind of thing. And there's a price tag on that that is, again, an unbelievably high price tag. Because when you were first talking about, I'm going to get a computer, my wife and I, we've been talking, and this is something that I can do. You talked about knowing somebody who did it in his spare time, like every other Saturday or something like, or he had one every Friday and every Saturday he would do a wedding. And he talked about how much he was paid. And I was just spit take level shocked. <laughs> And I was like, well, that's what how much he makes in a year? And you're like, no, that's how much he makes on Friday. In a year. And you said, but I studied. I do film editing professionally. That's what I do for a job. Think of the things that I could. Because you used to do like videos for each child's birthday. And it's been a long time since I've seen yeah. one of them. But I was just like, oh, my gosh, my womb would just ache <laughs> for children when I would see that. And... <laughs> Yikes. Um, I'd just be like, wow, this guy loves his kids so much. He's done this super elaborate, this is what has happened to you in the last year, montage with music. And, and the kids would just eat it up. It's like, wow, somebody loves me this much. They made a movie about me kind of thing. I mean, that was the, the mindset of a kid. And you're like, I could do that with somebody's wedding. And as soon as one person saw it, They'd be like, oh, F the other guy I was going to get to do. I'm getting this guy to do mine. I don't care if it costs five times what the regular Friday night guy is charging. And I was like, wow, that's brilliant. Because you do have a talent with that. And you have a skill set that 94% of, of people out there don't have. And then also you have creativity too. And I, you did do somebody's video that way. Was it your sister's? Was it? I your, did a few. There was a Superman one that I'm remembering. It was Superman themed. Oh right. And he okay. was dressed as oddly Lois Lane, and she was Lex Luthor. I, I, I shaving her head was probably a mistake, but hey, it's her special day. Where you just had all this stuff, and 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 you went to him beforehand, and you said, "What kind of songs would you like?" And basically, as a dry run is my right. my memory. And of course, I could be completely wrong about this, but who cares? Because I'm talking, and you have to just lay there, mm-hmm. think about England. So, yeah, I, I, I was going to say something in edgewise, but yeah, the so time's passed. Your throat hurts. Don't just just <laughs> just lay back and be pretty. That's your job. You showed me that what you had done. You showed me like some of the raw footage, and then you showed, and this is what I did with the music, and. It's like, yeah. ooh, it's you were upset. Star because wipe. You were upset because it was that stupid. Uh, he used an REM Superman song. No, I offered I him the REM Superman oh. song, and he wanted the Smallville theme song, which you despise. Oh, yeah, it's uh, Remy Zero. Mm-hmm. Oh. And I said, no, this other one. I mean, this is a good song. You could use that one if you want. And he's like, no, no. I don't. I'm like, but this is like actually about a guy and a and a girl, and he's no. He insisted on wearing the brown cape too. <laughs> so you showed me this and I was really impressed. And you said, you know, it's going to take up a lot of time, 
but you know, it's going to be my job. And like anything, I'm sure there would have been a learning curve. You would have come up with a couple of different formulas or t- templates or whatever, and just alternated or whatever. And after a month of doing it, it would have been way easier. And after six months of doing it, would it would probably have been easy. And I'm saying that with quotes because it's still mm-hmm. going to be super time consuming. And you still have to stand there. And if you've gone to one wedding, you've gone to almost every single one. Almost every wedding I've ever been to was a clone of another wedding that I've been to. It's really rare. Now, see, I'm from a Hispanic family. And so on my mom's side of the family, people would do really interesting things where, you know, with like mariachi bands or do it outside. Or a lot of them would do it where there's this dance it. where you pin dollar bills to the bride. You get to pay to dance with the bride. And you know, basically you get to fondle the bride, <laughs> which is hard because, you know, it's usually a family member. But uh, for the most part, the weddings that are held here are carbon copies, mimeographs of all the other weddings you've run off to. They don't even have, you know, a song or anything. I mean, they, they just have a DJ and he plays the same Trisha Yearwood or Carrie Underwood song or whatever that every wedding play. I, I don't know. It's, 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 I, of course, it's a huge deal and a huge expenditure, but you'd think that people would want to put some kind of creativity in there. But it, it's not about creativity. It's about you wouldn't want to stand out. You wouldn't want to. <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. I remember there was one wedding in California, and of course it was in California because here they're not going to do anything like that. But bo- both the bride and the groom sang a song to each other, and it was just like, whoa, and people were just bawling, and I was just like, <laughs> wow, I'm going to fudge and do that. Yeah. I mean, little did I know that- Karaoke? You were going to have a karaoke night? <laughs> I I was like, wow, that is so My sister did that. They actually, her and her husband had like a little routine to the song. And it was like, my little buttercup, you have the sweetest smile or something like that. And they had the whole, of course, sadly, my sister lost her voice the weekend of her wedding. And so she just got up there and kind of did the actions with him. And he had to sing it by himself. That's the way things work, I guess. Like I'm going to lose my voice by tomorrow. Anyhow, I'm sorry. This is this, so you were the going whole somewhere. point I was going to Computer. make about this was if that had happened, if you had become this videographer of, for weddings, I mean, how different would your life be now? Would there be a show that we've got? I mean, and how bad do you kick yourself about that? To be continued next time. That Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License. Sad but true. All right, what are we doing? That Gets My Goat. I thought we had retired that. <laughs>